Well, congratulations on such an awesome game. Thank you. Thank you. I'm very proud of myself, too. And you kind of <laughs> said it, you summed it up well. You said people wanted you gone the first time you played, and this time, everybody in the audience today was just cheering for you, and they were, they were upset when you were gone. How does that make you feel? I am so happy that people finally love me. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I'm an actress. I like positive affirmation. You know, I think most human beings do, but I feel like this time I earned it. You know, I I played a completely different game on purpose. Um, I went into it with one goal, and that was to win a million bucks. I didn't need to be the one who got the most attention or the most air time or any of that. I went into it to get a million bucks. And I somehow managed to get all the way through the game and not make a single person angry at me. And that's unfortunately also not... I found out not a good place to be either when you when people go to the final three. So that was the irony of my situation. Now the thing we heard over and over by Russell this season is how much he was in control of every move you made. Oh God! How do you respond to that today? Um, well, the way I've been responding to it is something I can't really go on record as saying okay. <laughs> because I want you to be able to use this interview. <laughs> um, I, at the end, when I did give it off, was going to give Russell my vote because I appreciated the way he played the game strategically as well as aggressively, but he lost my vote for one reason, because he is, does not know how to be a humble, gracious player. And at the end, when you're sitting in a room full of people that you have one by one knocked off the chopping block and sometimes not in a very strategic way as far as keeping them on your side, liking you, you know. You can, you'll, he'll never win. And Russell was never in control of anyone. Every choice I made, I made on my own. And there was a couple times, though he will never admit it, that I saved his ass. Hmm. When, if I had gone on Rob's side instead of Russell's in that one vote, he would have been gone. Would've and been there, was a, yeah, there was a couple of other times people were gunning after him and I thought, this could, I could do this, but I watched his, the effect he had on everyone, and nobody liked him. So who better to sit at the end with? Right. Take him to the end. Yeah, but it's insulting, quite frankly, to have someone say things like, he controls me better than anyone else. I think he said that. Um, that I never had any gameplay. Russell's a newbie. I've played this three times now. I knew exactly what I was doing, and every choice I made was my own. Now, you said you played this three times. Two times prior, you played with Colby. Yes. What was your relationship like with him this time? We really didn't see a whole lot of dynamic between the two of you. I was so bummed. All the, the really cool stuff between me and Colby hit the editing room floor. Hmm. And, again, I blame Russell for that. You know, a lot of this became the Russell show, and that bugged a lot of us because some of the the best moments on Survivor are the moments when you're not necessarily talking about the sure. game and you're just being friendly and human with another person. Sure. Colby and I had an amazing time together. We spent many hours on the beach laying in the sun just talking about life and um, we went fishing together all the time. And it was just bizarre to me that none of that came out because I know everyone was curious how we were going to get along. We got along great and it was we almost found comfort in the fact that we had played together so many times and we knew each other so well. It was a comfort. And I mean, I'm really sad that that didn't come out in the show. Now, was there any hesitation for you to come back for a third season? <laughs> oh yeah, I hesitated for sure. I, I didn't know if I wanted to put myself through another bout of Survivor based on what happened in the All-Stars and me walking off the finale. You know, that was... That was the toughest thing I've ever been through in my life, honestly. So I had to think about it. But I know myself and I know that if I said no, I would literally spend the rest of my life wondering what could have been. And I'm a competitive person and give me the opportunity to compete against other people physically and mentally, I, I thrive on that. <laughs> so would you do it again? Damn it! Yes, I would. I would totally go back for more because I'm, I'm, I'm totally insane. <laughs> right. And I got a little bit of taste of what it's like to go as far as I did, and it felt good. It felt really good, and I want some more of that. Real quick, one thing I wanted to backtrack to: the very first episode, right when Jeff talks about Russell and how he cracked the top five villains, we kind of saw a reaction from you. Yeah. Is that all you were told about Russell? That was it. 
Um, was there talk about that at camp? Did you guys ask him? Well, he wasn't allowed to talk about his season. Really? Wow. Yeah. So, you know, I we we knew he was on a villain team for a reason, for sure. And um, when Jeff called him, what did he call him? The, like the top villain of all time. Yeah, I definitely reacted to that. I I went, uh oh, who is this guy? Sure. And finally, advice to a future player. Anybody who's going to be in your shoes one day. I would say learn to stock a big pile of patience and accept the fact that um, the best way to play the game is to let other people make the strategic, aggressive moves. Even if it's your idea, make someone else do it. It's always better to be the one who looks at it. Congratulations, Jerry. Good to see you. Thank you.